It is Monday, November 7, 2016, and welcome. This is the Monday Morning Analyst. As you can see, we are here in New York City. Uh, the fight week doesn't kick off till Wednesday, but we wanted to go ahead and get things going. And I thought what better way to do the Monday Morning Analyst than to do it inside the park here. We're actually just by the Vox Media Studios, so welcome everyone. I appreciate you guys watching. As you know, we normally have three segments. Today, I'm, we're going to have three segments, but we're going to do a little bit differently. In the main segment, we're going to talk about uh, the Diego Sanchez I don't know how we got out of that guillotine by Marcin Held. And of course, we'll talk about Tony Ferguson versus RDA in detail, what makes Tony special. I normally go through the card, but for the purposes of brevity, just want to sort of spotlight a couple of strong performers. Number one, I thought Alexa Grasso's debut was absolutely phenomenal against Heather and Joe Clark. And the one thing that I thought really stood out to me was, of course, she's technical, of course, she's disciplined, and of course, she's well-rounded. But it's that latter point that's most interesting. A lot of strikers, right? You always say, ah, you know, when they get their takedown defense so good, they'll be so much more potent. She's already there. Her takedown defense is absolutely phenomenal. Not merely in defending wrestling, but sort of operating offensively and defensively inside the clinch. I really thought she had a great strong showing. And I thought it was smart matchmaking to put her against a limited but talented veteran and Heather Joe Clark. I also want to give a shout out if we can and a sort of a spotlight, uh, Ricardo Lamas against Charles Oliveira. First of all, fighting a guy who's basically a lightweight, number one. And number two, doing so, I thought he lost that first round pretty handily and to come back and put that guillotine on him that I also thought Charles Oliveira was going to be able to get out of. Boy, you go back and look at early parts of Ricardo Lamas' career, had a lot of guillotines, and then against Dennis Bermudez as well. Let me tell you something, if you can guillotine choke Charles Oliveira, who does seem to show some susceptibility to that, but nevertheless, Dennis Bermudez as well. Wow, you must have a vicious, vicious guillotine choke. And, and you can see in his personal life, the things that he had uh, happened to him, his mother having cancer, and of course, shouting out Josh Saman. I thought Ricardo Lamas deserved a little bit of a nod as well. So, without further ado, there were other strong performers, but let's go ahead and get to the main event. Tony Ferguson taking on RDA. This was an incredible scrap from beginning to end, and I thought Tony Ferguson really showed why. When Eddie Bravo said he was the future of fighting, he really is probably right. Let's take a look at that breakdown now. All right, so let's talk about Tony Ferguson and Rafael dos Anjos. And what do we notice? What, what did I pick up on this fight? There were a few things that Tony does. And what you're going to find with these slides is I, I really struggled with this. Like, how do I present what I saw in a way that is palatable to the audience? And what I basically decided was... I'm going to have more slides as the fight goes on. You're not going to see a whole lot in round one. You're going to see a lot much more from rounds, let's say, four and three, four and five. How about that? And the reason why is because it wasn't like there wasn't a lot of action in that first round or that I'm trying to diminish what RDA did. He did a lot of great things. I, even through the fifth round, his jab was great. Um, the leg kicks got away from him, but early on he was pounding them. Inside, outside, he had great movement. As you can see where the slide is, he was the one kind of pushing Tony Ferguson backwards. But what you're going to see over time is that, and, and this to me is the major takeaway about Tony Ferguson generally, as these slides progress, just ask yourself, who has the more dynamic attack? Who is the one who can do and does more things? Who is the one who is out here showing a bunch of different looks with off-rhythm stuff, with side to side, with great movement, with just experimentation, who is getting looser, who is getting tighter. And you'll see that it just becomes apparent that Tony Ferguson took over this fight. And in, in going back on it, you know, the first time I had it, round one RDA, round two Ferguson, round three RDA, round four Ferguson, round five Ferguson. So he's the clear winner no matter what. In watching it again, I think if you give the third round to Ferguson, that's justified. I also think if you give the third round to RDA, that's justified. That's just one of those things in the 10-point must system that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. But I just sort of want to say something here. Like, you you cannot walk away from these slides without thinking, holy crap, Tony Ferguson is something special. Now, we're going to have a couple of slide sequences you're going to see where he gets himself into a little bit of trouble, you can see some scenarios maybe where someone like a Conor McGregor or a Habib Nurmagomedov or somebody else could take advantage of it. I'm not saying he's the perfect fighter, but Dos Anjos, for all his offensive potency, and we talked about this, you know, he's more conventional. RDA is the guy who does the bread and butter stuff. Tony's the, you know, the, the more experimentation guy, but he takes risks. That's true. Tony Ferguson does take risks, does take risks, excuse me. And that should be noted as some of the things that are deficient in this game. But on balance, it's a major plus. And on balance, it contributes to the dynamism of his game. 
So with that said, let's look at these slides. Here's the first one. Now, again, we're not going to look at a whole lot of slides in the first one. As the rounds progress, we'll see more because that's really when the attack of Tony Ferguson comes alive. Again, I want to mention both guys are going on leg kicks. Uh, RDA is much more conventional around the thigh, inside and outside. RDA does a great job of working his jab. But one of the things I want to pay attention to, and they did not land early on, but they land all the time later on, the lead uppercut from the right-handed stance. You'll see it here. Look at Tony Ferguson in a right-handed stance, and he was switching stances back and forth, not doing a lot of cage cutting or corralling, although he would let RDA drift into space and then tag him. But what you're going to see here is this misses. I, I want to be absolutely clear about that. This misses, but this is the kind of thing that makes Tony Ferguson special because I guess, guess what? Over time, it stops missing, and it becomes a key component of his offense. I love the uppercut. Not a lot of guys throw it, and not a lot of guys throw it from the lead hand, a lot of guys throw it this rear hand uppercut. Remember your, remember, your lead hand is not going to be as powerful. Your rear hand is going to be the one that's really powerful. So let's see what he does here. So you can see him stepping to the outside, and he's telegraphing it big time, but look how much distance he can cover. That's the crazy part. And he still connects. And what he's usually trying to do, you can't quite see it in this sequence, but what RDA often thinks he's doing is when he's dipping and lowering, RDA thinks that's his chance to jab in. Or he thinks that, or that that he's throwing a hook either with this side or the other side because he does it with both. And so what RDA does is he tries to take advantage of that, and he just doesn't come close. Look at the distance this guy can cover. This one did not land cleanly, but I just want to point out, look where his hips are facing. They're facing away. Look at that. I mean, this guy is just digging in Duho Choi style into these lead hand uppercuts. And th those are usually in more boxing contexts. They're used as like a chin raiser, but you'll see that it's an offensive disruptor for Tony Ferguson. Just work with me as we go through these slides. All right. Now he kind of gets countered here with the left of Dos Anjos because he still, early on, his distancing was not as good as it could have been. Right. And he tries to come back with his own. Um, and this one misses, by the way. But you'll see that Dos Anjos misses big with the right hand here. I want you to pay attention to that because later on, Tony Ferguson begins to time how badly and measure how badly RDA was missing with these and then take advantage of it. So let's just work through these slides here early. So now he's cornering Tony against the fence. This was good. I mean, when he was moving forward, RDA was winning. It just he didn't move forward for enough of the fight to matter, I guess, in the end. All right, so we keep going. He stops. He kind of catches Tony right here in space, lands a nice right, like a sharp in, uh, uh, lead right hook, right, and pushes him to the left. And misses with that one, but that was a, you can see the attack. Tony's getting his head off the center line, but this is you know look how tall and upright he is. Not a, not a great place. And then they kind of recenter here, and then he circles back out. So you can see that early on, Tony Ferguson a little bit unsettled with his attack, but those those distinctive elements to his game were really in play. And then they sort of sort of square off here um, at the end. Oh, and he catches it with a nice jab coming straight to the middle. You can see he's cocking back for that uppercut again. Early on, wasn't all there, but this quickly changes, right? Oh, and look at him fire that uppercut. Again, it misses, but look what he does. As you extend out, he likes, this is a, the old Arlovsky, um, Vladimir Metyushenko special. He comes up underneath. Let's keep watching. All right, here we are in the second round. Again, we're going to have more as the rounds progress because I really want to pay attention to the portions of this fight where Tony Ferguson is really in command um, as that's really the story of the fight. All right. Here he is dipping that shoulder to the outside. RDA is probably going to try and meet him in the middle. Let's see. Covers up. And what does he do? He comes up the middle. What you're going to see later as the fight progresses, Tony Ferguson uses that lead uppercut to split the guard. We had Eves Edwards on last week. What did he say about Eddie Alvarez? He noticed that the ways in which RDA defends a lot of attacks, they don't change too much. He does some side parrying here. In this fight, he does some down parrying here. But this triangle, while effective, he goes to the well a little bit too much. And what begins to happen is Tony begins to fake him out and get him to react in certain ways. And he either goes around the guard or he splits it with that lead uppercut. I really love this punch. And then he comes around as he begins to circle out. He, Tony would love to push RDA back and then get him to circle and then catch him as he begins to move in space. Boom, catch him with a liver kick. He loved, loved doing this. All right, here they are facing off in round two. This is the common southpaw stance you saw from RDA, common right-hand stance, although Tony was switching back and forth. All right, what does he do? He likes to parry that hand. You can see him down parry it continuously. Boom, catches him in space. 
I want to make a note about this. You don't really feel it yet. We talked about this previously, right? If you're moving on a one, two, three, four step, when do you want to catch a guy? You don't want to catch him on one or on two or on three or on four. If he's going to go one, two, bang, that's when you want to hit him, in between one and two, in between two and three, and in between three and four. Tony is a master of doing this as it keeps going. And I want to pay, pay attention. He can come from either side. Here it's a, it's a right cross just covering a ton of distance. RDA just really never saw it coming. Nice shot. You can see it pops his head back. RDA tries to counter, and he's just not anywhere really close enough, unfortunately. Okay? And then Ferguson catches him again. Ferguson's output, yes, he'll blitz you occasionally. But what he gets you to do is, in the first round, you don't get a sense of it because I didn't have a ton of slides, but in the first round, RDA is popping a jab, popping a jab cross, popping a jab, jab cross, low kick, and then another jab on and circles out. What you're going to find from Tony is he makes so many reactions and gets that in-between timing so often that RDA begins to start single-shotting because he keeps getting countered. So he's hoping I can land a big one, maybe maybe hurt him, and then, and then swarm. But he just becomes much more limited in his offense. Let's keep going. And you see him miss as Tony catches him with that left, right? Bink off the inside. Really nice stuff. All right, here we are. We're still in the first minute of the second round. They're facing off. Let's watch. Tony lowers his level. What's he trying to do here? Could be anything, right? Boom. Comes up with that, not the lead, but the rear hand uppercut. Now, he misses. Again, I'm, you're like, why are you showing me a bunch of times he's missing the uppercut? Because eventually all this stops missing. And you can see what happens when he lowers his level. The hands of RDA come up. So what do you think Tony realizes? Okay, I didn't get it this time. I got your ass next time. They keep going. And then he comes around the guard with a nice left hook, right? Because the hands are up. And what, what you're going to see Tony do later on, he'll fake, a, he'll fake a level change, the hands come up, and he'll dig to the body. Nice stuff from Tony. All right, here we are about a minute and a half into the second round. They're facing off. Let's see what happens, okay? He's going to come with a straight left as he's... Look at the weird stance he has, right? Like it's, it's a Superman punch almost, not like a jab off the beginning of a Superman punch. And then he comes with the right, okay? Give me a second for this to load. I apologize. Here we are. And here he fires again an uppercut as he tries to push back and get RDA open. Now, he eats his own left as a consequence from RDA, but he's beginning to, in these tight spaces, as he backs up RDA, backs up with a shot, back him up with a shot as RDA comes forward, catch him coming in with a nice lead uppercut. Or in this, Well, it's hard to tell what stance he's in at this point, but in this case, it looks like a lead uppercut on that left side. So we're just trying to point out the different uses. He'll get it to cover distance. He'll fake a level change. Your hands come up. He splits the guard. A lot of different ways in which he's using it. In this particular case, he's trying to get it as he backs up RDA and then as RDA begins to come forward to counter. All right? So here they are facing off again. We're now halfway through the second round. RDA looking at him. Here's Herb Dean on his horse. Let's see what happens. Faking, uh, or at least you know, loading up to that right side. What do you see RDA doing? Whoop, let's go back. Look at that, hands down. Ferguson loads, RDA comes up. He doesn't know what's gonna happen here. What does Ferguson do? Tries to split it a little bit, up that middle, and, and RDA backs out. Again, he's getting closer and closer and closer and closer with this. He had a bunch of other punches too, don't get me wrong. But this is stuff of the, some of the stuff you'll see that begins to just chip away at RDA's offense. All right, we keep going. And then he just sort of throws a back fist out there just in case. Not a back fist, but like a sort of like a, uh, like a lead hammer fist kind of thing. Um, not, not necessarily all that useful, but, you know, you guys are orthodox. All right, here we've got RDA backed up against the fence. All right, this is a good round for Tony Ferguson. What are we going to see here? I don't know. Let's check this out. Tony Ferguson is really good about getting his head off the center line. This is a nice jab from Dos Anjos. He steps in. He's got his other hand up, shoulder covering the chin. Look at that. But he's going to dip to the inside to get away from it, Tony Ferguson is. And how's he going to react to it? He's going to roll to the outside. Go back and look at this. He's going to dip in, and he's going to make a U shape with his head. Watch. U to come out. Now he's on top. You see how he made a U with his head, right? Now what's he going to do? You look at that. Look at that left loading up and RDA trying to like create space and get away. Bang! Now the uppercut is starting to land. 
He digs it right up the middle. That is a thing of beauty. Rolling right, coming all the way under the left, and then you think that the guy might be going over the top. He does not. He comes in as the arm is extended. That is nice, nice boxing. Nice boxing. And when you pop a guy's head up, oftentimes you can connect with the right. Let's see if he does. I don't know. I didn't get that slide. Doesn't matter. That is slick. That is slick. Rolling to the inside, to the outside, making a U-shape with your head, and then connecting there. All right, let's see how the second round ends. He kind of jabs, or comes around. RDA, you can see, is sort of reaching here. And they both kind of try to throw a punch, although it looks like Ferguson connects. Here's the, what, what do you notice about this, though? Right? Okay. You've got RDA in the left-handed stance. You've got uh, Ferguson in the right, in the left-handed stance as well. Okay, so they're now two southpaws, quote unquote, facing each other. Ferguson sort of jabs. RDA kind of puts his hand up to block. Puts his, I mean, he mostly blocked it, right? To credit to RDA, and then he switches stances. And as he switches stances, even though he's the longer fall, I mean, even though he's sort of like the the lankier fighter who could maybe miss up his distance if he doesn't do it right, because he switched stances, he gets into the inside space first and connects with the left. This is what I'm talking about as every round progresses. Here comes that offense from Tony Ferguson. Really nice stuff. And then you see RDA kind of stumble as a consequence. Look at him like doing the fish dance here. Staying now in that right-handed stance. And then it goes back to something of a left-handed stance. Sometimes Tony Ferguson stands almost like Katsunori Kokuno square. And it can be like hard to tell exactly what stance he's in. Um, but that's just sort of more evidence of the fact that what he's doing is, is, you know, is pretty remarkable stuff. All right, look at RDA trying to get his balance here. And then look at that. So remember before he threw a jab, where did Tony go? He went to the inside and made a U-shape roll to the outside. Now he's rolling to the outside, and I think he's going to connect here. Let's see if I got the proper slide. Boom. Where are you looking at? Lead uppercut. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. This guy uses uppercuts in the most creative and consistent kinds of ways. you got to love it. you got to love it. Look at them reaching. Now, he's open for some other shots from some other strikers, which we'll get to later. But this is nice to look at right now. And then he comes over with the right. RDA is basically out of the way, but just sort of pointing out how he's trying to chain offense together. And that's smart for any number of reasons, not least of which is look at the kind of distance he can cover, which we had talked about a little bit previously. Right? Oh, and then he follows up with that body kick, which, by the way, hurts him. I think this one connects even though it's the toes. I think RDA pulls his guard down here. Let's see. Yep, look at that one. Look at that. What stance is he in? Now he's back to that right-handed stance, right? Uh, not the left-handed stance anymore. Okay? Let's see. Boom. Comes right to the body. Now RDA is getting backed up. Right? And then he's going to come over the top as RDA. Remember, as RDA goes from inside to outside, Ferguson's going to love to connect on him here. And again, it's hard to tell. I mean, look, this looks like a right-handed stance. Um... But, you know, you never know exactly what, what Ferguson is doing. But he's just sort of chaining all the different pieces of the offense together, right? Catches him at the end as the guy's moving away. Oh, that hurt. Look at him. Drops his hands because he's like, mm, that doesn't feel good. Boom. Goes right to the body, right? And as he tries to move away, bink, right up top. I mean, this guy's all over you like white on rice. Here we are, 46 seconds left in the second round. Look at the striking disparity here. I mean, that doesn't tell the whole story, obviously. RDA had his moments, but you get the idea about, like, where this thing is kind of headed, okay? All right, so here comes the jab. This is the jab right here of RDA. So Tony slips to the inside again. Maybe he'll roll, but this hand's coming up, so that's going to be doing something, right? Boom, comes over the top. You can see it kind of connect right there. Not the best shot in the world, but it's the only one I could get. All right, so now... Uh, let's see where we are. End of uh, 34 seconds left in the second round. They're facing off. Let's see. RDA back in a left-handed stance. Tony in a left-handed stance as well. Okay. And this is going to be hard to follow at times. So he sort of comes forward with that jab, but it's like a... It gets down parried here. You can see RDA down parrying it, keeping the hand up. So he's defensively responsible, but a little bit predictable in the end. Tries to counter. Tony rolls off of it a little bit, gets that shoulder up, gets that lean going, really good at the leans, really good at timing it, and you can see him put his hand up here as this screen begins to ride itself, and he just, I believe he gets away, RDA just decides he can't connect here, okay, so he says, well, what's going to happen? So he just kind of resets, look, look where we are on the clock, we're just a second later, now watch what he does here, 
RDA takes a step, lifts his foot one more time, and eats a punch. Okay, if the, if the pictures don't do it justice, go back on your DVR or wherever and find it here. This is him going one, two, three, bang, four. Catching you on that middle spot. Right when you're not expecting it, bop, you get your hands down, you're going to eat it. It's not merely that he can cover distance, it's that he's getting you off, off timing. It's, it's, it's hard to do, man. That is an expert striker, because that is hard to do. And then he dodges as RDA tries to counter with this left. You know, RDA was in it, but, you know, whose game is more dynamic, right? And I believe they ended off here. I believe this is the end of the second round. As they're facing off here, let's see what happens. One of them is going to fake here. Let's see how this goes. I'm trying to figure out if I can remember. Uh, okay. So it looks like you're going to see a jab from both guys here. Now, he's dropping that hand, so let's see what he does with it. Oh, I know. He's going to get out of the way of the punch as he buries an uppercut on the jaw. Look at that. So let's see if we can tell what Ferguson did. Not really. Ferguson just kind of stands his ground, brings his hands up. RDA decides, I'm going to reach in for a jab. Ferguson expertly times it, leans out of the way and just digs an uppercut to the jaw of RDA. I mean, it's just it's just the stuff of, of genius. And remember, lead uppercut as he's, look, also, hold on. Okay, he's in a left-handed stance versus left-handed stance, okay? Buries that, uh, the, the heavier hand of the two in this particular stance. And then what does he do? Counters with that right, still in the left-handed stance. And here we are in round three. You can begin to see things picking up. Now, RDA has his moments, and we'll show a couple of them here. But I just sort of want to point out, I hope everyone's sort of getting what we're looking at here. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's see what happens here. So he throws an inside kick, right? And what happens? RDA is going to lunge forward, and he's going to try and take him down here. And you can see he's still kind of far apart, but this is something interesting about Tony. So Tony's long and lanky, which is great for striking, but you might think, and, some, and people think, oh, well, you have long legs, it's great for your guard. Yes and, yes and no. Lanky guys can get a lot with their guard, but if they're not really disciplined about guard retention, they can get past, and they can be, it can be hard for them to scramble. Not Tony. So you can see him. Look, look at how he covers distance. Like, he just goes from here, and then he collapses his shoulder to the inside of the hip. Like that, oh, actually further than that, almost up, up to the top of the shoulder, grabs behind the legs, and they crash to the mat. Look at what Tony does immediately. This is what I love. If you the, Tall guys who use full guard, I, I'm not saying it's bad, I, it's just you got to be really good at full guard. But tall guys who use butterfly guard, I think that's better because you're keeping, what are you doing? You're keeping your knees against your chest, right? You're per, you, you, someone can't pass unless they can get in and occupy that space. And he doesn't want to play that game with RDA because jiu-jitsu for jiu-jitsu, RDA is probably better. I mean, I'm sure it's competitive, but it's better. So what does he do? He keeps his knees to his chest. He never lets that space get compromised. And then he, at an angle, bucks them off. And this is the part about the thing that really got me. Look at this. Look at where they are. If I just took a snapshot of this, what would you say? Like, if you, if you had never seen any other slide and you just saw this one, what would you say? You'd say, Tony is screwed. You'd say Tony's screwed. RDA can just jump right back on top of him. But the truth is, and again, go back to the video if you don't believe me, the speed of Tony is great. Look at how Tony gets right up to his knees. RDA wants no part of it. RDA wants no part of it. He realizes that, like, unless I can hold and right away maintain, this guy's just going to get up. There's no point. The slightest bit of distancing, and Tony is just too much of a threat for wasting energy or whatever else you want to say for his opposition and never really lets you get in on his hips never lets, lets you get on the inside space keeps his knees to his chest i really think butterfly guard for tall guys if even if it, this is just the circumstance where you're creating a scramble is the best way to go about it let's keep going he gets to his feet looks like he's kind of awkward but trust me it's not all right so once this and i apologize for this there's nothing i can do about it because i'm in this weird studio all right here they're facing off it's 416 of the third round let's see how this goes Okay, Tony is, let's see, let me go back and look. Ah, okay, both guys are in motion here. It looks like RDA is about to plant and throw. You see Tony's kind of going side to side doing the salsa. Boom, catches him with a jab. It's a nice little jab here from RDA. Look at that, on the balls of his feet, bang, leaning in. It's a nice little shot here from him. Okay, with withdraws and doesn't really move out of the way. 
I think that's a mistake. But it's not. Turns out he can catch him again. This is one time Tony got a little bit flat-footed. When Tony's going side to side and staying in motion, he's deadly. When he gets a little flat-footed and tries to trade, he can get in a little bit of trouble. And you might think down the line, someone else might be able to take advantage of that in ways that maybe RDA couldn't. So we keep going. All right, RDA's on the outside. Here comes Tony. If Tony's in motion, he's all right. So RDA tries to catch him with one, and Tony tries to return the favor a little bit. And down, it looks like a down parry or a counter. And boom, RDA tries to throw his own uppercut, but it doesn't even get anywhere close. It's like a completely jammed at that point. But as Ferguson tries to turn away, remember Ferguson doesn't have like Frankie Edgar. You know, you never want to back out straight. You want to back out at like a J, at a J at each angle. And he kind of turns away. Ferguson makes him, or excuse me, RDA makes him pay for it here. So again, I'm doing a lot of praising of Tony, but a lot of people are wondering, you know, what might a Ferguson versus McGregor fight look like? It could look like this. That that would be bad for him, right? All right, so let's go keep going. They're facing off. Let's see. All right, as soon as this loads, we'll take a look at this. I believe what you're going to see is Tony in a right-handed stance, RDA in a left-handed stance. All right, what's he doing? He's lowering his level. Look at that right hand kind of loading up. So the question is here, how is RDA going to react? This is how he's going to react. He's going to lean off the center as Ferguson extends and misses. All right, fair enough. He's a little bit telegraphing there. Fair enough. And, but he's able to come back and throw a spinning back fist. This is not him countering with a left. This is him whipping all the way around from this. He comes in a circle and misses there. Credit to RDA keeping his hand up, right? And this is when RDA is like, oh, you can't get me. So Ferguson says, uh, I think I can. Fires a left. This one kind of grazes here. It doesn't miss, doesn't quite land. It just kind of grazes a little bit. But again, look at the stance. You know, what stance is he in? Okay, it looks like a left-handed stance, but it's just so hard to tell exactly what he's going to do. Because even from either side stance, he might throw a jab, he might throw a cross, he might throw a lead, he might throw a rear uppercut. He's just giving you so many looks. And we haven't even talked about the leg kicks or even the body kicks, right? That sort of teep to the gut that uh, Tony was doing the whole time. I just can't show everything, right? I'm sure, not exactly sure what's happening in this exchange. This is, I think, another one of the back fists. Oh, and then he smiles as he lands another one of the back fists. All right, so they keep going. Look at that. Maniac. Alright. Here they are. Right handed, left handed. Let's see what happens here at about 312 of the third round. RDA comes up for a kick. Tony blocks it. If RDA ever got through in any kind of way, I don't know if that's going to what happens here, but if RDA ever sneaks through, Tony responded immediately with a ton of offense, okay? So what does he do? This one you think is going to go to the middle of the body. Look at uh, look at Ferguson keeping his hand down, right? Thinking he's going to block his ribs. Bink comes right up top and it doesn't even phase the guy it doesn't even phase the guy tony ferguson has the ability to not only take a shot but he wears damage really really well rda is literally head kicking this guy and what does it do nothing he comes right over the top with the right hand immediately it's just it's just shocking it's shock i think this is the right same yeah look at that just comes right over the top like it's nothing blitzes him look at that blitzes him because he's angry about it it's, it's, it's just, he's a maniac. He's built for fighting. All right, here we are, 240. Facing off. Let's see what happens. So as this effing screen loads. All right, he lowers his hands. What does RDA do? Covers up. Now RDA is reacting. He's got outside foot position, so maybe he's going to fire the right. We'll see. What's he going to do? To the body. Love it. You think you're going to get an uppercut, maybe? You're going to bring your elbows together? You think he's going to throw a hook, right? Nope. Fakes it. Bink right to the gut. Super hard. Love it. All right, here they are. 217. RDA is now pushing Ferguson back. Ferguson didn't mind being here, by the way. Ferguson rarely ever got pushed up against the fence. He might have been behind the two black lines, but he never really got pushed around like that. He kind of loads his weight back behind him, right? So I try to, it's hard to explain. Imagine if he's here. You can see him sort of like doing the, the Charleston shuffle, and he kind of loads his weight one way. RDA plants because he doesn't know what to expect. Covers his hands as he as he sees Tony move in. So Tony's like, I've got you. I mean, what can't I do here? Body's open. I can come around the guard. I can split it up the middle. Let's see what he chooses. Gets him to come and drop his hands one more time as he doesn't uh, engage. Pops him. So what, is, what does this mean? Right? They're here. Sits back. 
Ferguson's like, or uh, RDA's like, I'm not sure what to do. Puts his hands up as he looks like he's going to engage. RDA says, huh, nothing happened. I'll drop him. Ferguson says, okay, now what have I done? In that whole time where you dropped your hands, I've now gotten close enough to you to smash you with a jab. This is what I'm talking about, man. This is next level fighting. It's next levels fighting. It's just incredible. All right, here we are, 210. Let's keep going. Let's go through these a little bit faster if we can. Falls him around. All right. Let's see which way he's going to go. He steps to his right, Ferguson does. Now they're kind of centered up here. RDA, you can see, is beginning to wear the damage. Now they're all really centered up. Let's see what happens. I'm not exactly sure what happens here. Oh, he stands in this opposite stance. Oh, this is when he's beginning to throw elbows. So one thing you see is when he gets close, rather than throw a punch... He does that Carlos Condit, Tiago Alves bit where he's trying to throw elbows in tight. And these miss early, and mm, they didn't land all that well, but changing up different attacks at different ranges, and this is what is constantly sowing the seeds of doubt inside Rafael dos Anjos' mind, right? Although, because he gets out of position and gets so close and doesn't adjust, RDA is able to step off to the side land a nice left hook. So for all the dynamism of Tony's game and all the risks he takes, there are also risks associated with what he's doing. And then they go back to position. RDA covers up. And that was that. Here we are, 158. They're posing off. Tony's hands are down. Looks like the left one's in motion. He's in a right-handed stance. He comes and brings his hand up as RDA sort of like paused with the jab. He's going to down parry, right? He down, And you can see he actually down parries it almost like quite literally. They're like phasing off, figuring out which reaction to get here. He tries to go for a jab. RDA blocks it and does his own like sort of side parry here, right? And then comes through and throws a nice left hand. This one partially lands as well. Not cleanly, but it, it gets through. Backs up Ferguson. Ferguson ate that one. So when Ferguson sort of, when they're facing off and trying to figure out what to do, that's a little bit more RDA's game. When they're, when... When he's moving forward and in motion and showing fakes and feints, RDA just had no answer for him. All right, here we go, 142, walking him down. Looks to be a right-handed stance, but sort of shoulders are tilting forward. All right, let's see what happens. They're in motion, All right? What's he going to do? He's going to stay in that stance. He's going to throw a left hook, right? He's going to whip it over as RDA stops in motion. He misses. RDA backs out. And I, why did I include this? Because this is something that I think a Conor McGregor would take advantage of if he did it. You know, for all of the experimentation that Tony shows, and he deserves an unbelievable amount of credit for it, this style has some risks as well. And you can see RDA. Imagine if that was McGregor. That hand, that, that left hand here would bang him over the top, man. All right. They're facing off. Let's see. Left-handed. Feels like it's a left-handed stance. But again... Because he's got the right foot forward, but look at the shoulders. They're almost square, right? It's just its just confusing. All right, so the two southpaws here, apparently. RDA, looks like he's in motion to go fire something. What does Ferguson do? He down parries into that lead hand. RDA sees it. Uh, this you got, you got to give RDA credit here before this photo loads. RDA waves his hands. Ferguson sees that he's doing it. Sticks his hand out to block him. Puts his hand up to block. Okay, that's nice, but that's not enough as my man loads to his right because he thinks it's coming on this side, right? Bang! Look at that. That's a great body shot from RDA. Whoa! Look at look at look at look at her, Dean. Ugh. <laughs> Even he knows that one was vicious. Vicious shot, man. All right, let's keep going here. And then he comes over and pops him on top with the left hand. Uh, okay, but he counters. Like he just takes punishment like it's nobody's business. You know, that's the kind of guy uh, Ferguson is. All right, let's move this along. About a minute left in the third. They're facing off. Yada yada yada. Down parries, sort of like reaching. Now he's on the right-handed stance again. Again, RDA did some stance switching, but not a whole lot. Lowers his level to that right-hand side. Hands come up from RDA. So what does Ferguson do? Bang right to the body. Gives it to him again. Vicious. Vicious, but this time it wasn't a jab, it was a cross from the right-handed stance. Pretty nice stuff, and then comes up with a lead-hand uppercut just for good measure, because that's the kind of guy Tony Ferguson is. And then, with a right hook on top. You can see him putting these punches together, right? These attacks uh, in pretty dynamic fashion. Um, 
fires an uppercut here, right? And then another one right after that with the with, uppercut was with the left-handed side. They move away off the half beat, bang, catches them, right? 17 seconds left, we're moving this along. Again, inside uppercut as he exchanges. We've been over that a thousand times, right? And then covers it with the right hand again. All right, I believe Ferguson's in motion, RDA's in motion, left-handed versus right-handed, right? Left, right. Hands come up. What's gonna happen? RDA probes with the jab. Ferguson sees it. What's he gonna decide to do? He's gonna lower his level to the right. RDA doesn't know exactly what to expect here. Anything could come, a jab could come, a lead uppercut could come. He just doesn't know because he's seen so many looks. Can't blame him, right? Boom. Now, he leans to that right. You can see him charging here. RDA thinks he's gonna you know, probe with the left maybe, maybe to down parry or something. Too bad, comes up and drills him with that uppercut. We talked about it before. Missing, now we're talking about it landing. Okay, they're facing off. They're in motion. You can see before Ferguson is sort of straight on. Ferguson is going to slide out this way. You can see him doing the Charleston shuffle there, bringing his feet together. Who knows what the hell he's going to do? Hands are down. He's always dangerous. He's going to change levels. Look at this. Hands are already up. Crazy, right? Because he doesn't know what the guy's going to do. Comes through. Imanari roll to his shoulders, right? Now, credit to RDA, he stuffs this completely. You can see if this was, if his head was on the other side of his rear end, he could have taken his back. You put the back of your shins in the back of their legs and you could take their back, but he's not close enough for that. RDA sprawls, and but he doesn't want any part of this ground game because he doesn't know what to do. And here is Ferguson using, posting off the neck to get a technical get up, right? Pretty nice. There we are, right? RDA tries to follow on a leg for just a second, but can't get it. And then Ferguson, as you can see, gets away. He's still sort of looking behind him here, to his credit. All right, halfway through. They're facing off. Lowers his level. Hands come up. Boom. Catches him on the end of it when the hands come back down. Just the timing is incredible. Comes back, still following through. Before. Right, what stance is he in? He's in a right-handed stance. Right, where is he at now? Left-handed stance, lead uppercut. Just, it's just it, the, the dynamism is too much. And here he is. He's going to follow him with a right-handed one. Just incredible, incredible work here by Tony Ferguson. Let's keep it moving. All right, following him back. I was already a circling. Right, and I apologize for the page loads. There's nothing I can do. I'm in this BS studio. Puts his hands up. What's he going to do? Here he's going to drive a knee. Bang! Look at that. All the way through. Now what's RDA going to do? Well, I got him here. I might as well take him down. But look at what Tony does. Doesn't quite get his hands together, so I'm not going to say he had him dead to rights, but that's a nice little deep pull he's about to get. Tony drives and then turns. In. Over. Like that. Look how far apart the hands are now. Hips using it to turn. And then he gets away. Pretty nice stuff. The takedown defense was ironclad for Tony Ferguson. And then he moves away. All right, let's see where we are in the time here once this stupid-ass picture loads. All right, 146, let's see what happens. Left-handed versus right-handed. Tony kind of fakes left. RDA is going to lower level, and he's going to shoot now. Let's see what happens. He's going to get in pretty deep, right? Look at that, around the hip, but look where the hand is. Hands kind of stay low, that's a vulnerability, but he's so... This takedown's never going to go, right? It's just never going to work. Rips him right up, pulls him right off of his hips with that underhook. The timing on the underhooks is spectacular. All right, and then comes over the top. Let's see where they are now. Facing off, they get away. Okay, almost at the end of the round. Here we go. And Tony's going to sort of sit. He's going to go look look for like an inside De La Hiva, right? A normal De La Hiva would be on the outside. We call that like a reverse or inside De La Hiva. And he steps out, but Tony just follows through with the shot. Okay, to credit RDA, he comes on top. Tony feels it, pulls back out of the scramble. And he's now the one who's going to be on top. And he follows through. RDA sees it. Now look at that. Look how quickly he can engage a shot and then pull back out. He's going to follow through with a punch. RDA is going to back up straight. And Tony is going to make him pay with a left. And I believe he's got a couple more here. Bang! Look at that. Tony loves it when RDA would pull left out of here. Face off. Look at the face on Tony Ferguson here. Look at that. Look at that maniac. And then blows him a kiss. 
All right, let's finish up here on round five. You basically know what's happening at this point, right? Here's Tony. Right-hand stance, RDA, left-handed stance. RDA kicks, Tony blocks it, right? Let's see what, how they react. Tony comes through, kind of switches stances in the process of reacting. RDA kind of pulls his hands out to react. Let's see what happens. Boom, catches him, right? So even though RDA is less dynamic maybe than Tony generally, if Tony gets coming forward and gets, kind of gets caught in space and a little bit indecisive, you can catch him a little bit, right? Not the end of the world, but you get the idea. It walks him down, throws a shot, RDA backs out a little bit, tries to sort of switch his stance to see which direction he wants to go, a little bit of juking, goes and fakes left. Ferguson reaches with that left. Let's see what happens as the computer loads here for which I apologize, catches him in space, right? So he's trying to, you know, duck and dodge, moves to his left as he does on the half beat. Look, he is throwing that punch before that foot ever lands and lands just as it lands. This is what I'm talking about with Tony's timing. It looks like it's a simple, oh, I just threw a simple punch. No, it's the way in which he throws that simple punch and the timing of that simple punch, okay? Here we are, they're facing off. Let's see what happens. You can see the damage is really sort of becoming apparent. Tony almost square, look at that. You know, that's a left-handed stance. This is almost a square stance. It's a, it's a right-handed stance, but it looks almost square. All right, Tony loads, kind of like, you know, puts his hands up, RDA doesn't know what to do. He's back against the fence. Tony kind of leans over, puts the, throws this to get the hands going. And here comes this bad boy, I bet, right? bang right to the gut doesn't come up and split the guard throws it right to the bread basket and lands nicely super nicely look at his hips all the way turned over all right here they are facing off tony pointing to the middle of the, he had him back against the fence tony backs out and says let's get down here and do it the guy's a maniac all right so here we go they're facing off halfway through now he eats a body kick or excuse me he blocks a body kick let's see how tony reacts Okay, first thing he does, he comes forward and throws a right hook over the top. Then, what he's going to do is he's going to throw a left to split the guard. Nice little uppercut, switching stances through the whole thing. Okay, RDA is going to want to land his own punch, which he's going to try to do here, and kind of gets through, right? So RDA is in the middle of this. But boom, here comes that elbow I told you about. When they get too close like that, rather than he might he might dig a rear uppercut or he might come over the top with that left hand, and that's going to crack him, and then they separate. This is the point I'm talking about. Like Tony would push Dos Anjos back in a straight line, and he's throwing weapons side to side. He's switching stances in the middle of this, and he's got different weapons for different ranges that are just hard to anticipate. Okay, 202, here they are. RDA throws an inside kick, looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. Tony comes through, lands a right to counter over the top. This one partially lands, but not really. And now Tony's got him dead to rights. Boom, catches him up against the side of the head. And then through. Look at the combination punching he's going here. Even if these are getting blocked, look at all the work that he's doing. And then throws a left over the top. This is all continuous off the same, same thing. RDA tries to react. Good on him because he's a tough guy. And here we go. Almost fight's almost over. Ferguson here. 114 on the clock. You can see the total strikes at this point that have landed. All right, he's in a right-handed, left-handed stance. Fakes left as the jab sort of comes out. Boom, he catches him. Steps through on it. Right, really nicely done by Artie. Or excuse me, by Tony Ferguson. They keep going. He gets in tight. RDA wants to throw a right. Doesn't really land. The left does kind of come through as he leans off the side. Okay, so they're like exchanging in space, but watch who gets backed up here. Boom, he misses here, he gets in tight, and now he's getting pushed back, right? Pushed back in a straight line, no less. And look at look at this Tony switching stances, coming through. Look at that, leaning off, and then there's that uppercut I was telling you about before. You know, you just can't ever tell when he's going to keep going, when he's going to stop, when he's going to change angles, what he's going to do. It's just, it's just magnificent. He gets out of the way, parries the jab and then catches him, look, on the half beat. The foot is not, the heel is not even down. And he catches him on the half beat. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Like, and there's the face of RDA when it's over, and he gives him a pat on the rear end. Tony Ferguson, 
ladies and gentlemen, is a savage. Okay, very quickly, just wanted to look at this amazing moment from the Diego Sanchez versus Marcin Held co-main event uh, from Saturday Night's Fights. So here you see Diego Sanchez kind of in on a takedown. Looks like a double there that he's trying to get a hold of. Marcin Held, not so much, you notice he's kind of still facing into Diego. He doesn't have it turned away, which to me indicates that, you know, one, Diego's head position is going to be exploited, but two, that... um, he wasn't all that interested in defending the takedown necessarily. Now, he doesn't ultimately get taken down, but just sort of something to note here. So let's look at these slides as we keep them moving here. So now you can see he's beginning to look. You can see he's putting his chest down. Look at the neck beginning to turn. You know, the guillotine's a lot of different things, and it's, it's nothing that I know a ton about. Um, but it, one of the, the key characteristics, for, you know, then all the guillotines are very different, but one of them is that you, know, you want to put weight behind the neck to the extent that you can, not merely for things like guillotines, but also takedown attempts, right? You, to the extent you can put your weight, the body weight on the head and the neck, that can do a lot. And I think also you notice that the spine is sort of curving that way a little bit as well. Um, let's see how this keeps going. So now he's adjusting. He's trying to like contort his arm to get it enough through. Now that's not you can still get a guillotine around the crown of the head, depending on how you grip it up. But he's doing—he's actually going to wind up picking a guillotine style that is like the most conventional kind in some ways. It's—it's a—it's not quite. It's sort of like a high elbow, not quite. Um, but he's going to get—he wants to get the inside. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can choke, but he wants to get that portion of his wrist basically uh, across the throat, and he's going to pull up and back on it um, to the extent that he can. So let's see how this keeps going. Right now he's trying to, again, cover the space more as he digs. It's not about just digging deeper. It's about covering the space at the same time. Now Diego's like, oh, I'm in trouble. So he tries to sit up at this time. And you can see he's remaining calm, but he knows this is not good. So, of course, this is just going to be a tug of war, right? Where is Helchin going to pull? He's going to pull down and away, basically, right? More more or less. Or I should say up and inside and away. Like, he's going to be curving at that. So that means Diego Sanchez wants to go the opposite direction. So now they're going to be in this tug of war. You can see Diego Sanchez trying to push on the elbow, and you can see the saliva dripping out uh, of his mouth, as Brian Stan previously noted. All right, so we keep going. So now what you notice is they're turning in a circle. This was sort of the interesting part about it all, was that everyone talked about him walking up the fence, which is insane, but what it really did was just enable them to create momentum as they turned. And they're already turning before he even did it. And you can see, look, this is not, it's not quite a high elbow. Uh, and he wants to be kind of leaning more to that side if he can. Look at him on his tippy toes, trying to drive his hips on the inside there to cover that space. So Diego Sanchez, like if you're getting guillotine on the ground, one of the ways you want to one of the things you have to do to defend it, if at all possible, and it may not be possible, but if it is, you want to get your base in the air. So he needs to get his hips away to the extent that he can, which is what he's doing there. Now he's trying to get his hips away, and, and now the takedown is moving to the weak side, right? How do you defend a takedown? You go, you jump to the opposite side. That's one thing you might notice here. Let's see how far it goes. I mean, look at that. That is, that is, that's a remarkable shot. And then not a very good photo. It's just a screenshot, but you know what I mean? A moment in time. I mean, look at that, dude. Marching Held is trying to pop his head off like a champagne cork and can't quite get it. By the way, look at the live toes there. You can put your toes on the fence. You're not supposed to dig them in, so it's a bit of a no-no, but we'll let it slide because it's a pretty remarkable defense here. There, you can see his feet are definitely inside. Look at how high he is off the ground. Marching Held trying to, you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to dig his hips in and then drive that fist up and in, um, you know, pulling with a little bit of the lats or at least pulling in tight at the same time. Look at that. Is that not insane? You ever seen anything like that in your life? That's a ridiculous, ridiculous moment in time. All right, so then he comes back down, but you'll notice they're whipping in a circle. They kind of started with Diego facing in. Now they've come full circle all the way around where Diego's facing in, but Diego's going to keep rotating as he pushes off the hips and tries to bring get his hips away. So you imagine if they were on the ground. Imagine if Held's body was on the flat on the ground. This would be the right kind of thing to tripod up and to move in a circle away from the choke, which is what he does. And in the process, you'll see if I can get this. There we go. In the process, you'll see he's going to kind of throw him by as he brings that hand up. You see that? He's almost going to be like a, it's almost like a knee tap. It's not quite. Because if it was a knee tap, he'd be down by the knee. 
but it's similar. A knee tap is you block the knee, and then on the underhook, you just drive them over, and they're moving in that circle again. Boom. Look at that. Diego kind of just throws him by, just like that. Now, look what Diego has to do. He has to balance on one head in like a yoga position and then turn and face inside, and it, the, the guillotine is still on. Look at that. But it's only once he gets the weight down does it pop off. Like, that is not a a recommended way of getting out of the guillotine, but man, when you got to do what you got to do, well, that's what you got to do. Uh, craziness, craziness. And you see, he, he gets off from here. Here's another angle of it. So you can see held looking to cover his body on the head and then get that elbow as far deep as he can so that not only can he go across the throat, but he can get the kind of leverage he needs to squeeze and pull up and back as he drives his hips in, right? So let's see how that works. And look at the river of spit. Look at that coming out of the mouth of Diego Sanchez. So now he knows he's in trouble. So what's he going to do? He's going to try and turn in a circle. And there's daylight here. You can still get on the crown of the head, though. Look how deep underneath that is, man. Bro, if he wasn't going to get this off here, he was going to be in super, super, super trouble. Marcin Held had him dead to rights on this one. And so he keeps turning. Now, Marcin, look, look, at, look, look at the amount of space they created between their hips as a consequence. So Held almost lost it here. He needed to recover here to the extent that he could, and to an extent he does, as he drives him back into the fence, right? He closes off. Essentially, you're supposed to be able to close off the space behind them. But then Diego just does that. I mean, it's just it's just beyond remarkable. Look at that, man. That, have you ever seen that, something like that in your life? That is a crazy shot. Look at this one. Now, partly it's Diego Sanchez posting here, but that's not... And you can see those are the toes digging in the fence. Not supposed to be doing that, but again, I just find it so remarkable. I'd let it slide. Uh, and Mario Masaki, like, what's he supposed to do? You know, I mean, it's a crazy thing he's looking at here. I mean, that is just a bananas thing. But it helps him rotate... Like, the chokes on this side, it helps him rotate his body around to the other side. Sorry, my connection to this studio is not great. And keep going. And there comes this. He's got the one hand down here by the, the hip. This is the hand that's going to come over the top and throw him by. And look, you can still see the choke is locked up here. Look at the pose Diego has to get in to get this choke off. You just have to have incredible resiliency to do something like this, right? You just got to have an unbelievable will. Like, there's not many guys you're going to get out of a choke like that. And that's when it finally comes off. Pretty damn spectacular, if I do say so myself. And last but not least, as you know, in this podcast, we always take a look at the card that's coming up. It needs no introduction. UFC 205 is just days away at this point. We are in New York City, and I'm super excited about it. So you know what's at the top. I Yes, I have my phone because my memory is not that great. But, of course, at the top of the card, Conor McGregor taking on Eddie Alvarez for the lightweight title. That's going to be incredible. Joanny and Jacek versus Karolina Kovalkiewicz for the women's strawweight title. And in the co-main event, uh, the champion, Tyron Woodley, taking on Wonderboy Thompson, of course, for the welterweight strap. Now, there's a six-fight main card. It still starts at 10. After that, of course, you have Chris Weidman versus Joel Romero, Kelvin Gastelum versus Donald Cerrone, and then Misha Tate versus Raquel Pennington. On the Fox Sports preliminary card at 1, this will be on Fox Sports 1, you have, ready, Frankie Edgar versus Jeremy Stevens, Habib Nurmagomedov versus Michael Johnson after last week's fight, last weekend's fight. That one has an extraordinary amount of importance. Rashad Evans is back, making his middleweight debut against Tim Kennedy. And, of course, Vicente Luque taking on Bilal. Is it remember the name, Muhammad? I think that's what it is. And then, of course, in the preliminary card, this is your fight, uh, fight pass portion. Jim Miller versus Tiago Alves, Rafael Natal versus Tim Boach, and Liz Carmouche, Carmouche excuse me, versus Caitlin Chukagian. I mean, the cards don't come much better than that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it around. I always appreciate it when you do. Thank you guys so much. We're here, folks. UFC 205 Fight Week. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, enjoy the fights.